Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ethan Heilman, and I'll be uh, talking to you about my work on um, uh, curl P. So in this talk, I'll present our cryptanalysis of curl P27, a hash function, which until 2018, when, we're, when we um, published this research, um, uh, was used to compute signatures in IOTA cryptocurrency. Um, and uh, in our research, we extend this attack to break IOTA signature scheme for even valid um, uh, payments. In this talk, we won't be covering the full signature attack, um, but see our paper or ask me questions about it. I have some extra slides, um, but unfortunately there isn't time to go into those details. So uh, what is IOTA? Well, when we were doing our research, um, uh, IOTA was one of the uh, largest cryptocurrencies um, focused on uh, IOT. I think it was the fifth or fourth largest cryptocurrency by market cap. Um, and it had partnerships with uh, several large companies. Um, Bosch uh, was quoted as saying they had purchased a significant amount of IOTA tokens and Volkswagen um, uh, talked about releasing IOTA related pro product in 2019. Um, although that doesn't appear to have happened. Um, so uh, why, is, why, is, why is this interesting to look at? Um, well, IOTA uses balanced ternary instead of binary. So ternary is base three, binary is base two. So rather than bits, um, zero and one, IOTA uses trits, minus one, zero and one. Instead of eight bit bytes, IOTA uses three trit trites. And you'll hear me use the term trit a lot. Um, and I'm just referring to um, uh, uh, base three um, unit minus one, zero, or one. Um, so the hash function that IOTA uses, curl P27, is a ternary hash function. Um, so rather than bits, it is using trits. Um, and IOTA uh, uses a variant of Winternet's one time signatures um, for their signature scheme. Winternet's one time signatures are uh, a hash based signature scheme. Um, and they haven't seen much practical deployment. So this is interesting to look at because it's a deployment of Winternet's one-time signatures um, used to secure large sums of digital currency. Um, and we can look at attacks and see how these signatures um, may fail in, in, in practice when they're deployed. So as previously mentioned, IOTA builds on Winternet's one-time signatures. Um, but it makes a change to how normally Winternet's one-time signatures are thought about. So Winternet one, Winternet's one-time signatures often have the, uh, have the property that the signature is proportional in size to the message which is size, signed. So if you have a large message, your signature is also of the same size as your message. Um, but this is not a, a, an attractive feature. Um, in many cases. So to ensure that signatures are of constant size, regardless of how large the message is, um, IOTA's signature scheme hashes the message down. So we see the message M come in, and it uses curl P27 to hash the message down to a constant size. And then it um, uses its variants of Winternet's one-time signatures to sign this hash of the message. Um, and that way, signatures are always um, the the same size, they don't, the size of the signature does not vary with the message. Um, but uh, as a byproduct of this, if you have two messages that hash to the same value, um, say message one and message two, they both hash to um, the same value, that is the, uh, there's a collision, um, then a signature on message one um, a signature on the hash of message one is also a signature on the hash of message two. What this means is that an attacker could perform a chosen message attack against this uh, signature scheme um, by uh, creating, a, uh, creating two messages that collide, um, one of them harmless and one of them malicious, and then asking um, another party to sign the harmless message. And then when they see the signature on the harmless message, they can um, use that same signature uh, on the malicious message. Um, now, getting a chosen message attack to work in a uh, cryptocurrency setting with um, payments is a little bit tricky, um, and we exploit uh, the multisig um, 
aspect of the IOTA signature scheme to um, perform this uh, and read our paper for the uh, full details. Um, and we won't be discussing them in, um, uh, in any detail. So what we want to do is we want to create um, two messages that hash to the same value under uh, curl P27. We want to break the, the collision resistance of curl P27. Um, and to do this, we're going to do differential cryptanalysis, but slightly different um, because uh, we have to do differential cryptanalysis on ternary, um, which is minus one, zero, and one. So let's look at how curl P27 works internally. Um, it's built on the sponge construction. So you have a message gets broken into message blocks. Um, the message block is uh, put into a state, a transformation function t is called on the state to generate a new state. Uh, the next message block is then put into that state. The transformation function is called again, and so on and so on. Um, uh, and then once all the message blocks have been absorbed, um, a final transform transformation is called. Um, and the first third of the output is, um, or the first third of the state is the output. Um, note that that security depends on the transformation function. If the transformation function is bad, um, the security of the scheme is uh, likely broken. For example, the identity function would be very bad here. Um, but this works a little bit differently than um, many, many other sponge constructions because when we take the message block and we um, uh, put it in the first third of the state, we don't XOR it into the state or add it into the state this actually just overwrites the state. So if we have two messages and they have a um, different message block, um, like message block 1a and message block 1b here, um, and after running the transformation function, all of the differences exist in the first third of the state, then when the next message block comes along, um, it will just overwrite those differences. So our plan is to figure out some way of getting all the differences into the first third of a state and then using the next message block to um, overwrite those differences and cause a collision. So let's dive a little bit deeper on the transformation function. So the transformation function is actually just um, repeated calls of this round function RF. Um, and in curl P27, the round function is just applied 27 times. Um, the round function is uh, always the same. It has no round constants. Um, so you just take the input state to the transformation function and you apply the round function to generate a new state. Then you apply the round function again and do that 27 times. And then the, the last version of the state um, is uh, the output of the transformation function. And this transformation function is very, very simple. Um, in fact, it's just uh, an S box um, uh, applied to the, um, the input of the state. So each trit in the input um, is mapped to, um, uh, is, is read into an S box, and then the S box um, produces uh, one output trit. Um, and we can see the S box here on the left. Um, so because it is always um, one trit uh, can only influence two S boxes, if we change a trit, the change um, can at most diffuse to one or two other trits. So in this case, the change has diffused to um, two other trits, um, but it is also possible where it just diffuses to, to one other trit. Um, So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to prevent diffusion through many rounds. So um, in this case, we have a single trit difference here. The round function is applied, and we still have a single trit function here. Uh, a single trit difference here, round function applied again, um, single trit uh, difference. Um, So our plan will be to create two message blocks that differ at only one trit. We'll ensure that no diffusion takes place for many rounds. Um, 
and we'll do this so that we can arrange that all the differences um, end up in the first third of the state. So by the time diffusion occurs, there's so few rounds left um, that that we can arrange for that small number of differences to be in the first third of the state, and then they'll be er erased by the next um, message block. So to um, figure out how many rounds we have to arrest diffusion um, and where we should put our one trit difference, um, we ran a, uh, a large number of experiments. Um, and here we graph the um, here we graph the output of these experiments. So along the along the x-axis here, we have the position that the one trit difference is in. Is it in the fiftieth um, trit? Is it in the hundredth trit? Um, and along the y-axis, we have the number of rounds before diffusion occurs. Um, and the color is just the probability that a collision results from this. So it, for position twenty, for position seventeen, um, we see that if we prevent uh, diffusion up until the twentieth round, um, the probability of a collision is basically um, one. We're guaranteed to have a collision. Um, so this is this is this is uh, our plan. Um, if we can prevent diffusion for twenty rounds, we win. Um, we will cause a collision. So. Um, just briefly visualizing um, difference propagation in curl P27. Um, this is what it normally looks like. You start with a one trick difference. Um, it slowly diffuses, slowly diffuses. And by about the 10th round, it's diffused throughout the entire state. Um, if you prevent it for nine rounds, um, it, it uh, pretty much diffuses through the entire state by the, by the 18th or 20th round. Um, and then what our goal is, uh, shown on this uh, third version is no diffusion has occurred for uh, 20 rounds. So you can see by round 20 diffusion starts occurring, um, but it is uh, so small, um, but it's so late and has so few rounds that by the 27th and final round, it hasn't diffused through the entire state. And because we chose position 27, where it has diffused is in fact, um, within the first third of the state and will be erased with the next message block. All right, so let's look at the um, S box and look at the probability of no diffusion occurring um, uh, in a single round. So when a zero is changed to a one, the probability is one third or three out of ninth. Um, and we can just see this trivially from the, um, from the S box. Um, minus one to zero is also one third. Um, and minus one to one is is uh, zero, and you can see why because it's it's perfectly balanced. Um, whatever you change uh, will result in um, will result in uh, um, a a change. So let's look at this through multiple rounds. Um, we use the symbol this like circled minus symbol um, uh, to mean that. Um, uh, that is a change from A to B. That is, it is a it is a difference. Um, so in our state machine, if message one um, at the one trit difference is zero and message two is one, um, we use the the symbol to represent that. So let's say we start with a um, zero to one difference. Um, in one out of nine cases, um, we will just return to this state. In six out of nine cases, diffusion will occur, and we will treat this as a uh, failure. Um, and in two out of nine, um, the difference will change, but no diffusion will occur. Um, we can take the state machine and turn it into a uh, matrix to calculate the probability for k rounds that um, uh, no diffusion will occur. Um, so given a one trip change at the beginning, what's the probability we can prevent diffusion for k rounds? Well, we want k to be 20 or higher. Um, for k is equal to zero rounds, um, it's, two to the, uh, it's two to the minus 47. Um, so basically, uh, using this uh, attack, um, we, have, uh, 20, uh, we have 47 um, bits of collision resistance in curl P27. Um, and note that no diffusion for 20 rounds um, results in a collision. 
So the way in which we find um, collisions is we choose a random message, we flip a trit, um, and uh, if we flip the 17th trit, the probability of a collision is um, uh, 1 over 2 to the 47th. Um, and if we're clever about choosing uh, the message rather than just choose a purely random message, if we fix some of the trits, um, we can ensure that diffusion won't happen in the first few rounds. Um, and this actually significantly boosts our um, probability of um, uh, getting to the 20th, 20th round without any diffusion. Um, so if we, if we choose our message uh, carefully and we fix some of the trits, um, it, uh, curl P27 has about uh, 23 bits of collision resistance. Um, so as, as collisions are very likely, um, uh, we, we, we try many messages. Um, one of the things that um, IOTA transactions have that make our attack much easier is that they have a um, data structure called a tag. Um, the tag has no impact on validity. It's not used anywhere else. Um, generally, uh, it is just used to put in like messages like I heart IOTA. Um, so we can just like randomly change this field. Um, and so once we choose a payment that we want to perform this attack on, um, we can just exploit the fact that there's this tag um, to uh, try and find lots of collisions. Um, so generating a uh, colliding um, uh, IOTA payment takes about, um, uh, on average, 15 seconds um, on an 80-core machine. Um, this average is averaging over uh, um, 5,000 collisions um, that we found. Um, and just to look at this in a little bit more detail, the paper has uh, much more detail on this. Um, we wanted to do this for valid IOTA payments. So we created um, two payments, um, message one and message two that collide. And message one pays Alice uh, 29 million IOTA um, and message two pays Eve 29 million IOTA. So if uh, so, Eve can show Alice message one, say, um, sign this, look, you get this 29 million um, IOTA. Alice signs it, and now Eve can use that signature to authorize uh, message two, because message one and message two both hash to the same value. Um, so let me show you a quick demo, um, a video of us running this attack. So we run our cryptanalysis code on 80 CPUs. Now we found a collision. We're actually going to generate a second collision. Um, and this is necessary for um, making uh, a valid IOTA payment. Um, these are our uh, two bundles. Bundles are what they call payment and IOTA. Um, we see that they pay um, uh, different amounts, um, but that they collide to the same value, or they, they hash to the same value. Um, and you can see that um, you can see that IOTA, uh, they, they passed a validation check. Um, so they were, in fact, valid messages inside IOTA. Um, so we disclosed this vulnerability to IOTA developers. In response, um, they replaced placed curl P27 with a hash function called curl um, with a K, which is based on uh, SHA-3. Um, and you can see the places. This might be a little bit out of date, but this is the places. These are the places where they still use uh, curl p27, um, uh, and then uh, curl p81, which has 81 rounds, and then curl with a k. Um, and I believe they're uh, moving away from curl with a k if they haven't um, already done it. Um, interestingly, IOTA and CyberCrypt um, work together to develop a new ternary hash function to replace um, curl p27. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, you should all go check it out. And they ran a cryptanalysis uh, competition for um, this new hash function. 
Um, so in response to our vulnerability disclosure, um, IOTA uh, claimed that the weakness was actually put into the hash function in, um, intentionally um, as a copy protection mechanism. Um, uh, and so I don't know if it was a, a backdoor or not, but um, I, I asked them, did we discover a copy protection backdoor in IOTA? And uh, they, they wrote, the answer to my first question is, of course, yes. Um, I believe this is, uh, you can read this on their blog. Um, so it's kind of interesting to think that people are taking cryptographic hash functions and potentially um, uh, adding uh, vulnerabilities to them for the, um, uh, for the purpose of uh, copy protection or um, exploitation. Um, so the signature forgery attacks presented in this talk, um, as, as I stated before, we disclosed them to IOTA developers. Um, they deployed mitigations and they no longer impact IOTA security. Um, and at no time did we send any of these forged signatures or payments to the IOTA network, nor did we interfere with the IOTA network in any way. Um, we ran all of our validation offline um, so in conclusion, um, we broke the collision resistance of curl P27, a ternary hash function. Um, we exploited this to perform a chosen message attack, forging signatures on valid IOTA payments, um, such that the payment one pays uh, Eve one IOTA and payment two pays Eve 129 million IOTA. Um, for more details, especially about um, uh, how we engineered these um, IOTA payments to be valid IOTA payments, um, and uh, how we exploited uh, multi-sig to perform a chosen message attack, uh, please read our full paper. Um, also, you can download our proof of, proofs of concept and cryptanalysis tools if you wanna create your own IOTA collisions. Um, questions? <laughs>